for the victory lap, though. Whoa, whoa. They ain't never seen nothing like this before. Little broom when I came through the front door. Ask me if I should overcome. What for? Train in the trees, please pardon my sycamore. Touch burning sands, cross lands, and still me sure, sure seasons in the year, yeah. Ain't no channel for champions and chain no fear. Yup, the champions here, yeah. switch gears. We keep the haters in the rear. At the blood, sweat, and tears, and my goal so near. I see my victory so clear. I see my victory so clear. And today, we break through. 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 Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are at Turlock Poker Room in Turlock, California. So today we're going to jump into the no limit game. I think it's 2-2. I think it's 2-300. to 300. Um, Could be match the stack. We're going to find out. So let's see what happens. Hopefully we run good, rebound from the last session and get back into the black. So, all right, guys, thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you guys in there. So we're going to jump right into the action here. In this one, this is my very first hand of the session. And I put on the $4 straddle. We're going to have a open to $10. And the actions are going to get folded over to me after we see a couple calls. And I'm going to look down at 6 8 of clubs. So obviously, I'm never folding here for six more dollars. I'm going to defend my straddle. And we're going to see if we can hit this flop hard as it's going multi way. So we're going to see this flop four ways. And the flop comes amazing for us. As it comes king eight six rainbow, we flop bottom two, and I check as usual, as I would check all of my range here out of position, and the action is going to fold over to me, and I think there is merit just for calling, but obviously in this spot, I don't really want to overcomplicate it. Um, there's also a lot of bad turn cards for me that can kill my hand or kill the action, and my hand is vulnerable, so. I go ahead and put in the raise here to try to commit the stacks on almost any turn and river. So I go ahead and make it 70 here. And this player is going to quickly make the call. So this pot has ballooned quite quickly here to about 180 in. And I have about 120 left. So the SPR is nice for a turn jam. And this player is actually going to act out a turn and he verbally jams. And I just call and we're going to see a river, which is the queen of diamonds. And this player turns over aces and we turn over our six, eight for two pair, which is going to hold. So it's always nice getting the first double up and getting our stacks moving in the right direction early on in the session. So in this next hand, we are in middle position. We're going to see an open limp and I look down at red aces. Now over one limp, I'm just going to ignore it pretty much and open my standard size and range. So I make it 10 here and we're going to see this pop multi-way. We're going to go four ways to a flop. So with $40 in the middle, we're going to see a decent flop for our hand, which is going to come ace, 10, five, all black. So we are running extremely hot right now. I flop top set and first to act is just going to jam here for around 50 ish more. And I am just going to quickly call. Looking back at it, I wish I would have just took a few moments just to give the illusion that I had something to think about because I totally forgot about the person behind me. So he obviously knows that I have a monster. So he mucks. Now we're just going to go to the run out here and we are going to hold. So top set will be good. And our villain shows king five. So she rivered two pair. So she just jammed on the five. So. Wasn't sure if it was just a semi bluff. Maybe she didn't think I was that strong. Maybe she even thought I was getting out of line. Whatever the case may be, we're just happy that the dealer is sending another pot in our direction. In this next one, we're going to look down at pocket nines under the gun. And we are going to be opening the action here to $10. The action is going to fold around part of the table, but I am going to pick up three customers here as we're going to go four ways to the flop again. So a lot of multi-way pots today, 
So with about 40 in, we're going to see if we can flop something good. And to your surprise, I am going to flop another set. So we're obviously running super hot today. And we are just going to look to continuation bet just to build a pot. There is a lot of draws available, flush draws, straight draws. So let's not overcomplicate it. So I'm going to go ahead and bet 30 here. So one player is going to continue here. Who's going to make the call for 30. So with 100 in, we're going to see a turn, which is great for us, which is the three of spades. So the action is going to check to me again. And now I'm just thinking, what's the best way to play this to get max value? But with this player, he's shown that he's going to call any bet pretty much. That's decent with a flush draw, straight draw, or even a single pair hand that also has a draw. So I decided to go two thirds pot. So I just make it 80 here just to try to commit stacks on the river. And if he decides to go with it now, well, then obviously I'm just happy to get it in. But he calls once again. So now we're heading to the river with 260 in. And this player only has about 150 left in his stack. So I'm pretty much going to jam any river here. So we see the river, which is the ace of spades. So backdoor spades did get there, which is a little worrisome. And if you happen to have a hand like two five of hearts, he got there as well. But it's hard to play poker with monsters under your bed. And there's so many other various hands that he could pay us off with that if we don't value bet here, we're just losing money. So I go ahead and rip it. And he thinks for not too long before he eventually finds the fold. And he would later say that he had a busted flush draw. So it's always nice that the heart didn't hit and we're taking down another one. Now, this next hand is a hand that I was not involved in, but it is literally one of the crazier hands that I've seen at a poker table recently. It involves four players, ultimately a four way all in massive cooler. I wanted you guys to check it out. I captured it on video for you. So moving on to the next hand of the vlog, in this one, we're in the small blind and we look down at 9-3 suited. So obviously it's a really trashy hand and I'm probably looking to pitch it, but it gets limped around the table. So it's only $2 more for me to call. So I'm definitely not folding for that price. So we're going to go five ways to a flop, which comes king, queen, five, two clubs. So we flop a flush draw, but it's pretty weak and I'm out of position. So I'm just going to check it through. And now we see the turn, which is the queen of clubs. So we get there, which is great. We now hit our flush. And now the player next to me actually leads for 10 with kind of a delayed C bet. And the button and the player to my right come along as well. So I definitely think I should have put in a raise here. I definitely think it's a mistake. I probably should have put in a small raise. It doesn't have to be big. Maybe something like $30 just to make sure that I'm continuing to extract value from various hands. That I'm still most likely beating. But I think in the moment I didn't want to get re raised because that'd be pretty gross if I had to fold. So I just called. 
But looking back at it, there's so many different hands that can call us still. Maybe a weak king, a five. If somebody was unlucky enough to have a weak queen, they now got there with trips. Or if somebody has the ace of clubs. So like I said, I played this hand like a fish and just continued to call. So now we're going to see the river, which is the ace of spades. So now the player to my left is going to bet $20 and the button is going to quickly make the call. Okay, here we go. Now it's the time to check race. Put in the check race. Now is the time to put in the check race. Now is the perfect time to put in the ch mother. F so I just continued to butcher this hand literally throughout all of it. It seemed to get worse and worse now that I even look back at it, which I don't remember seeing that in real time, but it's funny how that happens. And our opponents roll over a king, and the button rolls over the six deuce of clubs. Wow. So we definitely missed some value there. He definitely would have paid us off on a pretty decent sized bet. So. That one is definitely not a shining achievement, but we're going to keep it moving and at least we're dragging the pot. But man, that one definitely hurt the hourly rate. In this next one, we're on the button here as we look down at queen 10 of diamonds. So we're going to have a open here from the cutoff to $6. It's a pretty small sizing, doesn't really scream strength. So I'm going to go ahead and attack that here and I'm going to make it 26 to go on the button. Now the action is going to pretty quickly fold around the table here till it gets back to the cutoff. Who's not going to think too long as you can see. He's going to quickly make the call here so he doesn't believe us. So we're going to go heads up to a flop here with about 50 in. And the flop comes king 7 4 rainbow. The action is going to quickly check check. And now we're going to see the turn which is the 8 of clubs. This opponent again checks so. He's pretty much waving the white flag, so I go ahead and decide to bet 26 here. Just hoping to take it down, maybe get him off some smaller pairs, maybe some ace highs. So this opponent pretty quickly folds, and we're going to take this one down. So it's nice to get this one with not too much resistance. Moving into the last hand of the vlog. In this one, I'm going to look down at red ace king. We're going to have a min open, followed by a call. So I am definitely going to be putting in the squeeze here as I would do this with pretty much any hand I'm going to play just to isolate. So I make it $34 here with big slick and the action is going to fold over to the original razor who is going to take some time, a lot of time actually, and he eventually is going to make the call. So now the stack sizes are going to get a little bit weird here. This player is only going to have about $90 left. And we're already going to have about 70 in the middle as we go to this flop. And I noticed this player kind of thought about maybe jamming here, but looked at his hand, kind of seemed like he liked it, but he wasn't in love with it. Maybe he had like a big little card, something suited. And we see a flop, which is 10, 4, 3, all clubs. So now this player is going to instantly jam here. And we look back at our hand and we're obviously not in love with the situation. Yeah, I do have two overs. We do have some back doors to the wheel and to a straight. But I've seen this player actually do this a few times throughout the session. But unfortunately, I never got to see the showdown. So I don't know what kind of hands he's doing this with. I mean, it kind of felt like in the moment, maybe he had like some sort of big club. Maybe like the ace of clubs and he's just trying to rip it, just trying to get it in. Maybe like a pair and a flush draw. So the more that I thought about this, it just felt a little too spewy. I really had no idea what this player was doing with his ranges when he was making this play. So I decided just to fold, look for a better spot. And if he did happen to bluff me off this pot, well, it was a great play. Kudos to him. Sometimes that happens and you just got to tip your cap. So I didn't play for much longer before I decided to rack up my chips and call it a night. Hey, welcome back everyone. So to recap the session in Turlock, it was a good session. I was in for 200, out for about $715, give or take a little, about 700 after I gave some love to the dealers. So really good session. I feel like I played good, I ran pretty well and got some thin value in spots that I was really excited about. So 
we'll take it. It's a nice bounce back from the last session where they got me a little bit. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you for checking out the channel. Please like and subscribe to vlog and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you. Take care. Bye guys. Die.